Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Today I'm going to talk about retrofitting pinball machines with LEDs. <clears throat> I've probably done a few of these videos over the years um, and I want to talk about mainly the difference between <coughs> soft and warm white LEDs and why you might want to do that. Um, as you see here this is a uh, Bali Air Aces pinball machine. I've got the back glass over there and then this is the front of the head minus the back glass and I'm retrofitting the incandescent bulbs in here with uh, LEDs as you can see. Um, let me go over the show quickly the three reasons why I like to use LEDs. Um, the advantages they have over incandescent bulbs. Number one, they use less energy. If you swap out a good bit of the incandescent bulbs, and you can see these are down here, you swap out these guys for LEDs, they use a lot less electricity. You can run more pinball machines on a single circuit. Uh, they, uh, they're less likely to break down because they're pulling less voltage through the whole machine. Uh, number two, they run cooler and more reliable, um, which is really, really important, especially in these older games. Um, one of the common problems you'll see is these plate field inserts get all concave. It's because the lights underneath them um, heat heat up the plastic and make it shrink and then it gets messed up out of shape. So if you replace the lights with LEDs, they generate less heat, it's less likely to warp these plastics and that kind of stuff and it'll make the game last longer. And, and some people want 100% authenticity. Um, I think if the game is messed up or it doesn't work or it keeps tripping your breaker, it kind of defeats the purpose. I think there's a way of compromising where you can add tasteful LEDs into a machine, make it look and perform better and more reliably. And uh, so, anyway, third is reliability, or no, uh, or looks really. Now, some people may argue that uh, I mean, L and LEDs last a lot longer than regular incandescent bulbs, so you don't have to replace them. They're more shockproof, so they can, you can put them. I especially recommend putting them inside of pop bumpers and you can actually see there's actually a, a kind of a heat mark here on this one from this LED that's in here that's generating a lot of heat. Um, I will replace those with LEDs in the pop bumpers because it'll make them last longer and keep from discoloring them. They also look really really good when they're tastefully done. Now some people are puritanical about this and think that it's sacrilegious to put LEDs in traditional games. There's definitely a look and feel that an incandescent bulb has. I mean, you can see this, see that kind of incandescent filament glowing thing here. It's a, uh, it is a very distinctive color. It's kind of a yellowish color. Um, but nowadays you can get LEDs that look very, very similar to regular lights and avoid some of the common problems of the 60 hertz ghosting and the flickering and stuff like that. So let's look at the back box. Boy, you can hear it's raining outside. What you see here in the back box is a mixture of two different common kinds of LEDs. These are warm white and these are cool whites or, or natural white. Uh, the warm whites have a little bit more of a yellower tinge to them and the cool whites have a little bit more of a bluer tinge. Um, light is measured in temperature in Kelvin uh, on a scale. These are in the kind of 3,000-ish range. These are kind of in the 4,000 or closer to 4,000. The higher the color temperature, the more UV is in the uh, light, if I recall correctly, that which gives it its bluer color. It's more closer to daylight, the higher color temperature, more closer to incandescent kind of uh, nighttime old-style old bulbs running uh, the yellow. Now for a game like this, <coughs> I'm going to use a combination of both warm and cool LEDs. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I want to complement the colors in the back glass. So let's take a look at this back glass down here. This is a classic set of artwork from Dave Christensen from Bali. Um, just really beautiful, beautiful artwork. And you'll see that it's, it's mostly... Um, reds and yellows and greens with a little bit of blue and white. So this is a back glass that's going to lend itself more towards um, warm lighting behind it. Uh, the warm 
white bulbs will accentuate the reds and the yellows and the greens. The cool whites will accentuate the whites and the blues. Um, it bumps up the saturation a bit. So you can see what I've done here is I've, I've put LEDs corresponding to different areas of the back glass down there where there's blue. See, he's blue there in the, off to the right, and so that, that strip of blue here is where he is. And then I've got a, I leave a few incandescent blinking bulbs up top so that um, it gives it that, nat that, natu that natural kind of look of the, the blinks. You can get LEDs for those too. Now, up here where the uh, match thing is, I just use, I'm using regular uh, warm whites in there. And a trick you can use to get those out are these, um, if you use a, uh, a shooter rod tip, rubber shooter rod tip, you can kind of push it over the bulb and suction and pull it out. So this is a simple little way of uh, getting those recessed light bulbs out of there. So I've replaced most of them. Let's put the back glass in and let's see how it looks. Now these are not the super duper bright LEDs. These are kind of the very common, relatively cheap LEDs. I get these from Comet. These are single LEDs. Now I could put dual or three or high power, higher power LEDs and it would really explode. But I'm going more for kind of a subdued, not too aggressive uh, light intensity. So let's throw the back glass up. And see what we got. So there you have it. Just a really nice, beautiful, classic look. Um, you can see where the blues are emphasizing him. See this white really pops, whereas the, if it, when it's lit with warm white, it's definitely a little more yellowish. This is definitely more clear white. And uh, this, is, this gives it more of a natural look the way it was originally intended, minus a little bit more intensity here in the blues. Um, if I wanted to make it look completely stock, I'd just replace them all with warm whites. And you can see this is a... Let me see if I can turn the other light off. Again. Okay, so there's without, without any front lighting. And uh, that it looks pretty darn authentic. <clears throat> the only thing that, that, that detracts is you can see I got a cool one up here because I wanted to accentuate the Bali. I probably, though, might want to remove this blinker somewhere else. Where should I put the blinker? Maybe like right over this airplane or something like that. But you know, oops. So you can you know you can play around with it and try to get the right the right look for it. <coughs> the blinker over the blue just doesn't do justice, whereas the blinkers over the reds and the yellows definitely um, look really really cool. So this is a good example. And and what I'll do down here on the play field is I will keep most of these GI, the general illumination incandescents, because that's just really classic and you can actually see the bulb. But underneath the play field I will definitely replace them with uh, with LEDs because that will reduce the wear. I'll put LEDs in the in the pop bumpers but I'll keep it so that you have to take a closer look really to see that it's LEDs. If this is done right you can make it hard for somebody to tell that it's been retrofitted and it uses a lot less electricity puts a lot less stress on the game the bulbs don't hardly ever need to be replaced, and it runs cooler, and overall, I think it's a win-win. So uh, there you have it, the difference between cool and warm LEDs and how to use them to light up a backlash. So, so for more, visit uh, pinballhelp.com, and thanks for watching.